Hey guys and welcome back to War Thunder. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how you can fly like a top pilot in arcade battles planes and we're going to be starting right from scratch so that means I'm going to be showing you both beginner tips and also pro tips towards the later portion of the video and also I'm going to be showing you some actual battle footage towards the end of the video. Now then we're going to start from the very very beginning as if you just started playing this game. That means the control layout. Now there are plenty of different inputs that you can use in War Thunder, but the one that I'm going to be showing you here is the mouse and keyboard, and in the opinions of many people, probably the best one to use. What you're gonna do is go into controls, and you're gonna go to control setup wizard, you're gonna click on air, you're gonna click control setup wizard, and you're gonna select the mouse aim option. Now this is my control setup right here. Once you select the mouse aim, it will pretty much be the same as what I have. Outbite, I have changed some things over here. I think mostly with just the large caliber and small caliber guns. I've set it so that I use my small caliber guns on my right, right mouse button. And so that means that I can fire my large cannons and also my small caliber guns with my left mouse button. But if I want to just use my small caliber guns, then I use my right mouse button. Now before we actually go out into flying, there's one more thing that you need to do in the interface. You want to select all of these to be always on. Your fuel indication, your ammo indication, and your temperature indication. Once those are up, you'll notice in the top left that you have a lot of parameters to look at, but it's actually not too much to worry about, because in Arcade, you don't have to worry about oil and water too much unless you're constantly wepping the entire match and you're literally alive for about 15 minutes. Then your engine might actually break, but that almost never happens. Where possible when you go into a match, you want to make sure that you have the least amount of fuel as possible because any more fuel will just weigh you down and the lifespan of a plane in arcade battles is usually not that long. So it's best to keep the fuel amount as low as possible so that you'll have the best chance against your opponent. Now we're going to start off with the basics. When to use your keyboard and when to use your mouse. Your keyboard is going to be doing the major motions. Your mouse is more about the slight adjustments. As you can tell right now, I'm just using my mouse and not even touching my keyboard. These are slight adjustments. Now I'm going to use my keyboard. And you'll notice that the turning is a lot sharper. So essentially what you're going to be doing is using your keyboard mostly all the time because it pretty much overrides what your mouse is inputting. But whenever you're trying to focus down on an enemy, say you've done your major movements and then you just need to make slight adjustments to actually get onto the aiming reticle, then you'll just use your mouse to ease into it. Now then, there are plenty of different ways to make a turn in War Thunder. A lot of people would be inclined to just roll on their side and then just pitch on up. And that's not a bad idea for a turn. However, it's actually not the most efficient way to make a turn. What you also want to be doing is pitching up, but also using your rudder at the same time. Like so. And by doing that, you actually do a sharper turn than you would if you rolled on your side and then use the pitch up key. Now here comes a more intermediate slash pro tip. If you want to turn more sharply, even than that, then you want to actually try to stall out because the slower your plane goes, then the sharper the turn. So what I try to do here is I try to climb up, lose speed, use my rudder at the same time, and then I just let gravity push me down. And that can let me do a sharper turn than normal. Throttle control is very important to master, and you use them in different situations. I've got my throttle control set up both on my control and shift key, so when I press control, it lowers the throttle, and when I press shift, it ups the throttle. Now you're going to want to use the throttle to try to adjust shots or to make your opponent overshoot. For example, if I lower my throttle, then my opponent might have more speed than me and overshoot. If I raise it, then that should allow me to, for example, gain speed so that I can keep my altitude so that I don't stall, or it could be used to turn even sharper or to adjust my shots onto an opponent. If you hold shift for long enough, then you actually engage your wartime emergency power. And what this does is for a limited amount of time, depending on what plane you use, it'll be different, for, but for a limited amount of time, you're essentially getting more speed from your engine than you can possibly get. But mind you, if you keep it on for too long, then eventually your engine will cut out. But luckily in arcade battles, this will eventually come back. Now what you'll notice when you start using your wartime emergency power for too long is that your engine will start to putter and shortly afterwards it'll cut out. 
What you don't want to do is get to that stage. You don't want it to cut out because that puts you in a detrimental sort of position. So use that putter as a notification to stop using the wartime emergency power. And simply by letting go, then you start building up your wartime emergency power again. So once you master the basics and you want to start flying more like a pro, then what you're going to start doing is using your wartime emergency power in turns. So essentially, when you're going up into a high portion of a turn, you're going to want to use your wartime emergency power to power you up into that turn. And then once you start falling off to the side, you're going to want to turn it off so that you let your wartime emergency power build up again. So the next time you start going up into another turn, you'll have enough wartime emergency power to actually power you into such a turn. And then again, you let it go, rinse and repeat. However, that's not always the case. There's some instances where you won't want to use your wartime emergency power in a climb. And that's where you specifically want to try to stall out so that you can turn even sharper on your enemy. It's a very risky thing to do because essentially you're losing all of your speed. And so when you do stall out and turn on the enemy, you really have to make sure that you kill your enemy in that go. Flaps management is very, very important. By default, your plane should have flaps up to raised. And this is something that you should use on straight lines. When you're using just general turns, what you want to do is just simply press F and use your combat flaps because that will allow you to turn better than it would if you were using your raised flaps. The only detriment to using combat flaps or anything lower than that is that it bleeds speed quicker than it does with your raised flaps. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Do I want to turn sharper or do I want to keep my speed? Now even better than combat flaps if you want to do short acute turns is your landing flaps. I've got mine set up to a macro on my mouse. By simply pressing my mouse button, then it lowers my landing flaps all the way down. And by using your landing flaps, in the short run, you actually turn faster than you would if you used combat flaps. The only thing is you bleed speed very, very quickly when using landing flaps, especially when you're using prolonged turns. So in the long run, if you're doing a duel against somebody, then using landing flaps only will actually make you lose. So you might be getting the idea that you have to use your flaps at different times in a battle, and you are absolutely right. As I said, raise flaps for straights, for your general turns, that's going to be your combat flaps, and for your short, acute turns, the ones that are going to be very important, where you want to make a decisive blow on your enemy, that's going to be your landing flaps. So once you've mastered all those things, what you want to do is start incorporating them all together. And this is what separates the average Joe to the player who knows what they're doing and can win tournaments. Alright, so let's get out into a sort of turn, and I just want to develop it a little bit here. And then I'll tell you guys exactly what you should do. So if I keep on just going around like this, around in circles, then this is just your average sort of turn. In a dual situation, if you keep on doing this, you won't win against your opponent. What you want to do is a series of high and low turns. And you want to be maximizing when you use your WEP, your wartime emergency power, and also your flaps. So in general, I like using combat flaps throughout this maneuver, but I know some people also use raised flaps on the more downward portions of the turn. But for the sake of just what I like doing, I'm going to use combat flaps the entire time. So let's put that down by simply pressing F. Now as I go up into my major high point of the turn, I'm going to use my whip, and then I'm going to let go, and then I'm going to start falling down. And then as I start coming back up, I'm going to use my WEP again. And then I'm going to let gravity pull me back down again. And the idea behind this is very, very simple. But the idea behind this is that you keep on doing this. And it's very efficient management of your wartime emergency power, your flaps, and everything. So that hopefully, you should be able to get behind your opponent. Now what you don't want to do is just use your wartime emergency power the entire time in a turn. Because although it will make you turn more sharp, if you keep on doing that, then if you're versing somebody who knows what they're actually doing and conserving their wartime emergency power, in the long term, you're actually going to lose. Because that wartime emergency power should be conserved where possible, built up, and then used at critical moments 
when you want to try to turn the battle around on your enemy. An important thing to do when you're in engagement is to always make sure that you have your sights on your opponent. And there are multiple hotkey buttons that can help you with this, but I mostly like to use the C button. When I hold C down, I can just look around my plane. And whenever I'm just in doing a duel or an engagement with an opponent, I'll just always make sure that I can see them exactly and what they're doing because it's very important not to only be able to make sure that you're flying optimally but also reacting to what your opponent is doing so having your eyes on them the entire time is a very important thing to be able to do now there are a lot of aerial maneuvers that you can perform and i really really recommend just reading a book or going on wikipedia to find out more about every single one but i'll cover some very basic ones for example simply just by going to the left and then to the right can help break some distance between you and your opponent if they just keep on going in a straight. Another maneuver is the rolling scissors where you're going to be going up and rolling over, obviously responding to what your opponent is doing. You can maybe even incorporate some rudder into that as well to try and help turn as best as possible. And essentially what you do with this is whenever somebody is chasing you, then hopefully they might overshoot or they might into engage into a scissors as well, at which point you might try to cut back your throttle. And as you're doing that, if your opponent has a cut back on their throttle, then they'll overshoot and then you can just pull up your throttle and boom, 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 right on into them. Another maneuver that I like to do is the, I guess you would call it like a rolling climb or a corkscrew. And what you're going to do is simply just hold on to your roll key and also your pitch up key. But another thing that you can also do is incorporate your rudder into it, your opposite rudder, to try and balance things out. So I'm using both my pitch up key, my rudder, and then I'm using the roll to try and even it out. Now that pretty much covers all of the theory in order to become a top pilot in War Thunder arcade battles, but it's easier said than done. It takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, and a lot of expertise to eventually master these things and then be able to use them effectively against your opponent. Okay, so it's time to take everything that we just learned and put it into practice. This clip that I'm showing you here is a clip from the recent 1 vs 1 tournament that went on where I was taking on Grak, who was number 11 when the tournament finished. And it's a really good example of just using everything correctly. Using the right flaps at the right moment, good throttle control, and also good wet management as well. So I would highly recommend you guys to save this as a reference so that you can come back to it again in the future if you ever want to see what you're doing wrong or how to improve, because everything is just really good in it. All right. So when I go out into this engagement against Grak, I know that he's a good player, but the first thing that I want to try to do is get behind him straight away. So the first thing that I did was put down my landing flaps, and that allows me the availability of turning very sharply, especially when I use WEP. The only problem is, is that if I use this for a prolonged time, then I'm actually going to bleed so much speed that my opponent's going to be able to get behind me very easily. So what you'll notice is that I'm actually switching between the different flaps. And by the way, I've actually got a blown up video in the top left that shows my flaps just for convenience so that you can see it easier. Now, what I had to do when I realized that my landing flaps weren't going to carry me at the very start of the duel, I had to actually pull them back and I switched between raised flaps and also combat flaps. But what you notice is that I'm going to be using combat flaps for most of the time when I'm just doing my general turns. As I described earlier, you want to be using your raised flaps for the straights, combat flaps for the general turns, and also your landing flaps when you've got enough wartime emergency power saved up. And you want to make those critical moments, those critical attacks on your opponent when you feel like you could get behind them. Uh, within that allotted time of your web not wasting. So I'm just using my combat flaps here, switching to my landing because I feel like I can get behind him. I power on the wartime mercy power, however it's not enough, but what it does give me is the availability of getting behind him actually uh, quite a bit. And I'm not fully behind him just yet or else I'd have clear shots, but the point is when you look at us right now, I'm much more 
on his six than he is on mine. Now the only way that I'm going to be able to get properly behind the six and maintain a good line of sight onto that aiming reticle is by using this high and low point variation in my turns and you will notice that I'm doing it here where I've got my combat flaps down and I'm powering into the high part by using my wartime emergency power and shutting it off as I start to fall down and gravity pulls me towards the earth. Also I'm using my throttle management here sometimes actually reducing my throttle because I'm looking at what my opponent is doing. Now I'm not actually pressing the C button to look at my opponent right now Simply just holding my mouse to the right allows me to pan over my view just to look at my opponent and it's very important and that's the reason why I, cr I cut back on my throttle because looking at what my opponent was doing, if I kept my throttle going then it might have been possible that I would have overshot my opponent and he would have been behind me. So throttle control is very important here. So these are just general turns again. But I'm getting very close on him. The reason why I'm not spamming my gun is because the rule in the tournament was that you cannot reload, even if you're in arcade battles. So every single round counts, and especially on the Yak-1B, which has a relatively low amount of ammo for both the MG and also the cannons. Now I can hear my engine puttering, and I always make sure to stop my wartime emergency power whenever I realize that my engine is beginning to putter because if I kept it going then I would run out and that puts me at a very bad position because my opponent may still have his wartime emergency power available and so that can start closing the distance between his his guns and my six. So I really want you guys to notice that I'm using these high and lows in the turn and this is what is making me or allowing me to get behind him. As you can see I made a very sharp turn there as in I was struggling to get behind a 6 and then all of a sudden I was actually in front of him. So much so that that actually gave me a good opportunity to shoot at him and that's the reason why I highly recommend using these high and low points in turns. Now again, cutting back on that throttle momentarily just to make sure that he's not going to get behind me, I never want to give him any good opportunities to shoot at me. And it works into my favor sometimes, because when I get into the low part, or the high part rather, of a turn, then if I cut back on the throttle, that can actually allow me to turn sharper than normal. A very close shot, the only problem is, is that he was climbing and unfortunately I didn't have a lot of speed. I was about 230 which isn't too bad, but given the angle that we were actually going up at, it's not great for me. So another thing to keep in mind of is also your speed, whenever you're taking on your opponent. You have to try not to stall, and especially in a duel. Because a stall is very can easily become a fatal situation for you, where the enemy can instantly get in on your six. So at all times, I have to make sure that I'm not going to stall and that I have enough speed that I can maintain my altitude. And so I switched on over to my landing flaps because I realized that my opponent was actually at a quite a bit of a distance away from me, so that I could get behind him quite easily. Now you'll notice that my opponent is using these highs and lows in his turn as well. However, what I'm doing every now and then is I'm actually rolling a little bit to, to kind of alter the way that my path is in the turn. It's hard to describe exactly unless you see it perfectly, but at times, especially when I get into the high portion of a turn, 
I'll actually rudder to the left or to the right, depending on which way that I'm turning. And then that will just push me down into the turn even more. And so then I can make even sharper turns. And so my opponent has realized that he is in a very bad position now because I've shot out one of his ailerons and he's just not going to win in a turn fight. So he's going into a straight line where he's just wiggling his mouse as much as possible to try to avoid my shots. Now, because I don't have unlimited ammo, I can't just continue down this way where I'm just going to be taking random shots. Instead, what I'm going to do, because I'm not damaged, and what he's trying to do also is just spam his mouse around, he's displacing distance, and so I can close in that distance to him. And so what I want to do is get directly behind him a very close distance and then let my guns off, or wait for a moment where he just stands still. But it looks like I didn't even have to do that because his aileron was shot out. He turned on the right and it happened to be that his right aileron was shot out. And so he just crashed into the ground. Now this video pretty much summarizes everything that I know in War Thunder. But to be honest with you guys, I'm constantly learning stuff in War Thunder all the time. In this recent tournament, I probably learned two or three new things. And so I wouldn't doubt it if in the future I learn even more. And in that case, if that happens, then of course I will update you guys with making more videos in the future, more tutorials. Another thing to consider is the fact that this is a one versus one duel scenario where things are controlled and it's a mirror match as well. But I realize in a random battle, it's a lot more hectic. There's a lot more people and also there's different planes. So it's not necessarily a mirror match. You're going to have an opponent with different flight characteristics to you. But the point is, is that the principles still apply. You want to do those highs and lows in your turns. You want to make sure that you're using your flaps, the correct flaps at the right moment. And also using your throttle control and wet management correctly as well. But anyway guys, I hope you found this informative, enjoyable and whatnot. Thank you very much for hanging around. And until the next video, this is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys next time.